right so in this lecture we are going to learn about the area scaling property of two dimensional transformation so let me write area scaling under 2d so what is this saying so suppose i i have a polygon or something like this an object okay which is which is having the initial area that it is having is a naught and if i apply a transformation t which is uh, given by a b c d okay then i will get a different object over here some different object okay so that area i will call that the transformed area okay and how much is that transformed area so that area transformed area is given by at is equal to the original area will multiply the magnitude of the determinant of that transformation t this is the formula for the area of a transformed object okay so suppose for an example so let me write suppose i have a unit square the unit square is has got has corner 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 and 1 1 okay and i'm applying the transformation t which is suppose given by 2 3 5 and 1 okay then this transformation will convert this particular object into some different uh, type of a shape you can even find the corners 0 0 if i multiply 0 0 to t i will again get 0 0 if i multiply 1 0 to t i'm, I'm going to get uh, 1 0 into t will give me what 2 3 5 1 so this is 2 and uh, this is 3 this is 2 3 so this 1 0 point a will become 2 comma 3 which is like this okay so this is a star this is origin star and similarly i will get b star and i will get c star so this is the transformed region now what is the area of this particular square the the sides are one so the area of this object is one what is the area of this object so it is clear that a naught is a naught is one and what is a t a t is a naught multiplied by the modulus of the determinant why i'm taking modulus because determinant can become negative also right so a naught is one and what is the determinant of this matrix it is 2 minus 15 which is minus 13 so magnitude will be 13 so this will become so area of this polygon or area of this parallelogram whatever will become 13 units okay so this is the application of this formula what is that formula i'll repeat at is nothing but original area will multiply the magnitude of the determinant of the given transformation suppose i'm taking an object suppose i'm giving an exercise suppose i have an object uh, x is having area suppose it is having 50 units square as the area of an object x okay and i'm going to apply a transformation matrix which is uh, shearing shearing in x direction uh, by minus 2 units and shearing in y direction by my direction by two units okay then what is the resulting area of the transformed object so which i'm calling xt okay now this means that we have an object which is having area 50 i'm going to apply a matrix t which is a shearing matrix in x units it is minus two and in y di direction it is two units so we know that 
if it is a shearing in the x direction the shearing matrix for x direction was 1 0 c1 this was the shearing in the x direction and shearing in the y direction was given by 1 0 c1 so here we are having shearing in x direction also and here you are having shearing in y direction so let us call this d so here the shearing in x direction is minus 2 and shearing in y direction is 2 so this matrix will be 1 1 in the diagonal shearing in x is in the first column which is minus 2 shearing in the second is 2 second column right and that is going to result some different object and what is the area of that object so it's clear that this area is 50 which is the original area will multiply the magnitude of the determinant of that matrix and what is the determinant of this matrix it is 1 plus 4 which is 5 so it will be 50 into 5 which is 250 units squared okay so this is how it works so this is uh, about the and you know if i reflect an object or if i rotate an object now you have to be very smart enough to while solving the problem suppose you are asked that to do, i have an object and i'm going to rotate it by some angle theta okay and we know that rotation of an object will not change the area or if i reflect an object along any axis suppose i reflect it along the x-axis if i reflect the object the area is not going to change so when you're reflecting or rotating the object you really have to use a common sense that the area is not going to change do you know what are reflection and rotation matrices or, or of rotation matrices are cos theta sine theta minus sine theta cos theta or a plus minus sign rotation clockwise or rotation anti-clockwise will not change the area reflection along any line which is either 1 minus 1 or it is given by minus 1 1 or if you reflect it along the y equal to x axis it will be minus 1 minus 1 you know this all these reflection matrices so in in any case whatever reflection it is it is not going to change the area of the given object okay now we are going to define something called as homogeneous coordinates so this is a next uh, important uh, topic homogeneous coordinates so if i take a point p which is given by x y in the two dimensional plane then this uh, this vector that i'm going to write the row matrix that i'm going to write is actually called the physical point and what is the homogeneous coordinate of this particular point denoted as the homogeneous coordinates of this points are denoted by hx h y and h so these are called as the homogeneous coordinates so for simplicity now this h that i'm taking here h is allowed to be any real number so if h is allowed to be any real number we have two choices what will h if h is not equal to zero and what if h is equal to zero currently we will look at h not equal to zero cases and this will be covered in the later lectures okay so so for the time being assume that h is not equal to zero now the homogeneous coordinates are of the point the physical point is x y and the homogeneous coordinates are given by h x h y h z uh, h and suppose for simplicity if i take h is equal to one then this homogeneous coordinates will start looking like x y and one okay this h can be any real number so even if i have suppose i have a point let me simply give you an example suppose i give you the physical point is two and three okay and if i choose h is equal to one the homogeneous coordinates of this point these are the physical coordinates. this is the physical point the homogeneous coordinates will given be given by two into one three into one and h is one if i write h equal to two then i'm going to multiply this as what remember hx hy and h so if i multiply by two i'm going to get four six and two i can even multiply take the h2 value to be half it will be what one three by two 
and h is equal to half you can take h negative also if i take h minus 1 i am going to get minus 2 minus 3 minus 1 so this this, uh, this means that the physical point is uh, having a unique representation that representation is 2 3 but in the homogeneous coordinates you can use any one of these presentations all of these points represent the same point 2 comma 3 in the xy plane so this is the physical point 2 3 what are the homogeneous coordinates of this point you can use any one of these so for simplicity what we will do is to avoid confusions we will always use the value of h equal to 1 so that as soon as the homogeneous coordinates are given to us we can understand what are the what is the physical point there because the first two numbers denote the physical point that those are the actual coordinates in the xy plane now the use of these homogeneous coordinates is that we will need them for using translations in two dimensional planes if you carefully observe the point x y and 1 this is the homogeneous coordinates of the point x y if i multiply it by a matrix identity 1 1 1 on the diagonal and i'm taking m and n in the last row and i'm going to put a zero everywhere else so what am i going to get when i try to simplify it i will get x into 1 plus 0 into y plus m into 1 so this is x plus m next coordinate is y into 0 sorry x into 0 plus y into 1 plus n into 1 which is n and the last coordinate is 1 so this means that this matrix is taking what this the the job of this matrix is that it is taking the homogeneous coordinates x y 1 to the homogeneous coordinates x plus m y plus n and 1 so in the physical coordinates this means that x comma y is transported to or is taken to the point x plus m y plus n by using this matrix which is a 3 by 3 matrix so for translations we will be using the homogeneous coordinates now in the homogeneous coordinates you, you will see that all the matrices are 3 by 3 whereas what we have used in all our earlier sections or earlier topics we have all used them as what as a 2 by 2 matrix so it means that we have to convert all the 2 by 2 matrices that were used before into 3 by 3 matrices so if you remember the first matrix that we did was something of the type a001 which was scaling in the x direction okay in the x coordinate by factor a this matrix will now be replaced by a1 and this part will be as it is and here i am going to put a 1 0 0 0 so this this matrix into this this matrix was it for was for two dimension this matrix is also for two dimensional but i am going to start using now this particular matrix so this part is going to remain the same and 0 0 1 and 0 0 1 are going to be added so that this same scaling matrix will now look a 3 by 3 matrix if i write the matrix 1 and a on the diagonal this is the scaling matrix along this scaling in x coordinate and the second one is scaling in y coordinate so this matrix will now be replaced by what it will be replaced by 0 0 1 0 0 1 and here i will have 1 and a on the block diagonal so if i want the scaling in both the in both the co coordinates may not be same i'm going to write a, a and b here and i'm going to write 0 0 here so this will be scaling in both the coordinates so i'm not the entries that i'm not writing are now zero if i want uniform scaling the matrix was a a and that i will write it as what that i will write it as a a and one so this will be the matrix of uniform scaling suppose i want to write the reflection matrix along the x-axis reflection along the x-axis 
we know that the matrix was given by what? 1 and minus 1 on the diagonal. It will now be replaced by 1 minus 1 and uh, 1 the end. Reflection along the y-axis. This is, I'm also revising this. I know this is easy. Still, I'm revising it. So this will be a list of all the transformations. Minus 1, 1 and 1 in the diagonal. And what was the reflection along the line y equal to x? The reflection along the line y equal to x and y equal to minus x. For y equal to x, you had a 1, 1 over here. And then you have to just replace that block 1, 1 here. Reflection along the line y equal to minus x was given by matrix minus 1 minus 1 on the anti-diagonal anti so that will be similarly replaced by minus 1 minus 1 here and a 1 at the end we had shearing matrix in the x direction and shearing matrix in the y direction so in the x direction the shearing was 1 c 0 1 that will be now be replaced by 1 c 0 1 with the 1 at the end this is the shearing in x direction or the x by the factor c similarly if i have a d here this will be a d here this will be shearing in the y direction by factor d and this was by factor what about the rotation matrices rotation matrices will also remain the same cos theta sin theta minus sin theta cos theta and a one at the end rotation clockwise and rotation anti-clockwise will change the sign and last but not the least was translation if you just want the translation in the x coordinate you will just write m here and put here zero so this will be the translation matrix for in the x direction if you want the translation in the y direction only you will write a zero here and n here that will be the translation in the y direction if you want both the translations you are going to write translation along m and translation along n and this will be the final matrix now these three by three matrix all the above new matrices that we have written are all of size three by three this means that now we can whenever we are solving problems we are not going to write such two by two matrices i'm not going to write such two by two matrices i'm straight away going to write all the corresponding three by three matrices so that even if the translation comes into the picture we will not face a problem that the matrix was two by for two by two translations were not possible right so we had to write a three by three matrix for translation so if you convert all the two by two matrices into three by three matrices with the third column zero zero one and third row zero zero one then all the matrices all transformations now together can be handled while solving the problems